Do 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 theme song. Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back. I um, missed the extra uh, video yes last week. I apologize for that. Um, <clears throat> pretty much all of my spare time after work was spent in uh, acquiring my new vehicle, which I now got and I'm very excited for. Uh, shout out to Levitt Brothers on uh, Hooksit Road in Hooksit, New Hampshire. If you're ever looking for a vehicle, I definitely recommend going through them. It was probably the most pain painless process of getting a vehicle that I've uh, gone through. Most of the time that it took was not with uh, him, it was with, you know, getting a, a loan and all, the, all that kind of good stuff cobbled together. So uh, that, and then as soon as I got the uh, car and, you know, possibly could have had time to do a video, then it was mostly spent prepping the house for what was supposed to be a hurricane, which ended up being just a light drizzle on our end. I hear some of the people got hit pretty hard. Um, I, you know, hopefully if you're watching this, uh, it didn't go too bad. Hopefully you have, you know, power, no tree branches fell on your vehicles. But that's one of the reasons why I was preparing so much for when it was coming is I had just acquired a new vehicle where we live. Trees and branches come down all the time that there's strong winds. And so I heard that there's supposed to be hurricane category uh, strength winds. And I was like, Okay, then I'm definitely having a tree falling on my vehicle because I just got a brand new vehicle that I actually give a crap about. And thankfully, none of that happened, but I mean, like, I was prepping to the point where uh, we have a neighbor that, you know, just uh, rents out the house, doesn't actually stay there, and, you know, it was to the point of me, you know, asking, hey, your driveway is relatively, you know, free of trees and limbs hanging over it, so besides a telephone pole snapping and heading right for the truck, that's probably the safest, you know, driveway in the area. Is it cool if I park on, you know, your driveway just during the storm? And I didn't even need to do that. So thank God, oof, you know, we got lucky there. But, I mean, you know, the way that the weather is getting more and more erratic and we don't do anything about it, I mean, the, the next one very easily, easily could be a uh, hurricane that knocks out quite a few of the uh, trees in the area. So, you know, we made sure that we have the, uh, the generator uh, gassed up and ready to go. Um, like I said, I was, you know, trying to make plans for where to put the, uh, the car, and honestly, beyond that, there's not much you can do, uh, maybe hang out in the, you know, lower floor of the house, and, uh, hope that it catches most of the tree, if there's a tree that's going to fall in the house, but, you know, I mean, you know, besides evacuating to go someplace else, you know, that's really all you can do, and I just, I see that happening, you know, more, I see, you know, the summer's getting hotter, the winter's getting colder, and, and crazy weather patterns in between, so, yeah, um, you know, knock on wood, this one was fine, but we'll see how, uh, the next one goes, but, yay, I'm excited to have a new vehicle, and I was right, it has significantly helped me cut down on smoking, because I'm refusing to smoke in it, it's one of the cleanest vehicles that I've been in, whoever the previous people were, Definitely were not smokers. I don't even know. I don't even believe they had a pet because the inside was just spotless. Not a single cigarette burn or, uh, you know, puncture from a, from a dog toenail, uh, anything like that. So super excited. And yeah, so the smoking has definitely gone way down. Uh, <coughs> it's actually one of the reasons why I was about to apologize ahead of time that I'm probably going to be um, coughing and maybe... Hacking up a little bit of phlegm, sorry, it's going to be a little gross, but uh, the, the, when, when you do, I think I mentioned it before, when you do initially start uh, cutting down on smoking, uh, you tend to start um, clearing your lungs out, and it can be a little gross, so I apologize if I make some uh, dad noises uh, while I'm doing this. So, uh, that's what's going on, so that was an interesting week slash weekend, definitely glad most of that's over, I still have to get the, uh, you know, license plates and everything on there because it has the templates. But I've, obviously with the storm approaching, I made sure to get the insurance, you know, switched over and all that stuff. So, um, you know, it didn't end up being necessary, but that's still something you got to make sure to do. There's a lot that goes into when you're getting a new one. And I kind of forgot about half of it. So, yeah, there's all of that. You know, you got to get it inspected. And, and uh, I mean, because it, it came with a free one, but you got to go to a specific place. So I'm going to hopefully get most of that stuff done. Uh, I plan on taking a day off this week because uh, I forget. I, I've been in retail so long, I forget that when you when you work Monday through Friday, sometimes you actually have to take a day off just to go run errands because pretty much every place that you need to go to is open the same day, same hours that you're working. I mean, you know, 
it's not the biggest complaint in the world, you know, at least I'm working, at least I have a job that's, uh, you know, decent, but yeah. Um, so because of that, <clears throat> most of, most of the week and weekend were spent on that. So really the only thing that we kind of did to, uh, treat ourselves was, uh, finally finished the Tomorrow War, which, which was an interesting, you know, I, I don't know if I necessarily want to do a movie review on this podcast, but, um, it, it definitely didn't go the places that I thought it would. I thought that it would start with, hey, the future people are recruiting uh, the past people, and then the whole rest of the movie was going to be, uh, hey, past people are fighting in the future, probably some kind of futuristic plot twist, and then <clears throat> the end of the movie would be them returning home. And that's not quite how it played out. I was actually very surprised to see that they... Um, you know, not, not it's not going to spoil anything, but they actually came back uh, to the present time um, with plenty of the movie left to go. So I was very interested where it's like, okay, well, geez, if they're still going, then let's see where the rest of this goes. So, um, yeah, it was interesting. I, I, I thought it was kind of funny how the, uh, the, the battles were conveniently in between all the dialogue. You know, like, for instance, in Wooden Point, they're, they're, they're running from the... Uh, from the monsters, and then, you know, just all of a sudden they've outrun them, and now they have time to do some expositional dialogue, so. Uh, but other than that, it was good. Um, you know, you can always do some minor complaints with anybody that knows weapons. These guys were... Uh, never mind, I'm not going to ruin it for anybody, but, you know, I, I would have chosen different weapons and stuff. But anyway, that's just nitpicking. It was a fun fun movie. Um, it is interesting how these mo movie companies are dealing with, you know, not being able to... I guess it was supposed to be you know, in theaters and stuff, and then when uh, COVID, they just sold it to Amazon for uh, for a decent sum. And that's something that I I remember it is a quote from, from, don't tell me, The Sopranos. <laughs> At one point, uh, there's not enough money coming in, so Tony uh, says to uh, one of his guys, he goes, what what are the, in, in the history, you know, of uh, something like, you know, like, in, in all of time, what are the two uh, recession-free occupations? And so the guy goes, certain aspects of show business and nothing. So basically saying the mob and show business are about the two recession-free, recession-proof um, ventures that you can get into. So, um, you know, I, I do feel for anybody that was, you know, hit pretty hard business-wise um, during this. And I'm just really happy to see that a lot of Places that I thought were shut down forever, they were just shut down a little bit longer than some of the other businesses because they had, you know, like the owner had an autoimmune disease or, or something along those lines. And so, um, yeah, there's a lot of local businesses that uh, have since reopened up that I thought were gone for good. And so I'm just really happy about that. But I know that that's not the case with a lot of people. So, you know, that's definitely, uh, we got to help out each other. Come on, you know. People that, that were hit hard, and it wasn't through any lack of effort. It was just literally through them not knowing that, for whatever reason, restaurants were going to be the ones that were pooped on as far as non-essential services go. And, you know, multiple stories like that. Like, you know, if if it's somebody that just didn't work because the government was paying them off, I mean, that's different. But uh, some of these people genuinely wanted to and just weren't allowed to. So that sucks. And if you know anybody that's, you know, you know hurting for it, you know, do, do the best that you can to help them out, or if they are trying to reopen, you know, make sure to give their business a shout out or, or make it a special effort to go, you know, frequent their establishment. I know um, my girl and I, you know, like trying to go to uh, the local, like, you know, local meat shops and, uh, <clears throat> you know, if we're looking for um, Christmas gifts, we like to look for the, you know, uh, places that sell the local artist stuff, you know, um, as, as best as we can, you know, and... You know, that, oh, so that was interesting. So we, you know, tried a hot pot again. This time we were able to hit some Asian markets and get some genuine ingredients. And what was hilarious to find that one of the hardest things that we were, were looking for uh, that I eventually had to order online um, directly through a, a spice website, not Amazon, but there was the uh, Sichuan peppers. And so those came in, I got like four ounces of them. And then Come to find if we had just, you know, uh, driven about an hour down the, an hour down the way to where the, um, you know, 
local Asian places are, quite a few of them do have their uh, Sichuan peppers. Um, quite a few of the ingredients that we were looking for, in fact, you know, some of the mushroom sprouts and everything. What was surprisingly the most difficult ingredient to find for the hot pot was uh, shaved meats. So basically with the hot pot, I might have mentioned it in the previous one, but, you know, any... Uh, meat that you get, you want to have it like paper thin so that you just drop it in the hot pot, pull it out, and it's already cooked. It's already brown. Um, you know, it cooks instantly because it's so thin. And so you can get shaved steak at pretty much any supermarket. What you can't get is any shaved lamb or shaved pork or basically any other meat that you might want to eat with the hot pot. So come to find we, uh, you know, we're able to uh, find a... Uh, really out of the way place that sells really exotic meats like um, boar, ostrich, alligator, uh, elk, um, you know, various, uh, um, you know, bird game, like, you know, not pheasants, but, uh, you know, quail and stuff. So it was really interesting. It was like basically any kind of meat that you could eat, they had. And so literally the only shaved thing they had was bison. And we were fine with that. I mean, bison's awesome. Bison should actually be the staple meat that we eat instead of cow. But whatever, that's for another, uh, you know, fight in another podcast. But he, even that bison was shaved-ish. I mean, he, he said that he liked it because he likes to do, uh, instead of steak and cheese, he likes to do a bison and cheese. And for the hot pot, it was a little thick, but you just had to leave it in for a little bit longer. I, when he said that, I was super excited because I th I was thinking that he had like shaved the bison like steak him thin, which is is basically what you're looking for in a uh, hot pot, you know. But obviously not steak We we wanted to have real, actual, fresh meat, not processed. But um, so yeah, the best that I could do was uh, getting some uh, pork spare rib because he says you want to have it like meaty and fatty, kind of almost kind of like you know the, the appearance of bacon, but not quite. If that makes sense. And so uh, what I did was I partially froze it. This is all recommended by the, the meat guy. So I, I partially froze it, and then I used a mandolin, and that worked okay. It, it, it wasn't the best as if I, you know, could have gone to an actual, like, you know, deli slicer with a spinning wheel and had them do it that way. But I got as good a results as I've gotten so far. So each time we keep getting closer. So, you know, now we actually have the Sichuan peppers, which was cool. So we had, like, you know, the, the heat with also, like, a little bit of numbness. Uh, what we didn't do was, I didn't realize you want to do the uh, Sichuan, but also uh, the red chili peppers. So next time we're going to do some, uh, both on the hot side. And then, um, it was interesting because they, the recipe originally called, if you have to substitute uh, Sichuan to do coriander seeds and peppercorn. And that one we actually used for the, the, the non-spicy side because it still gave it a nice, like, taste and a little kick to it, but not the, uh, you know, peppery, like, heat and stuff. And what's interesting is that one of the things they recommend for the heat, if it starts to get too much, is jasmine tea. And I don't know if you're a fan of hot ones. It's one of my, um, I mean, if you're, if you're not, what are you doing? Come on. It's one of my favorite uh, shows on the internet because it's just a genius concept. Or if you haven't seen it, they basically just give them spicier and spicier wings as the interview process goes on. So they start sweating and snotting and, you know, uh, you know, having to get up and walk around for a bit. But they drop their guard and they, you know, kind of get really open and real. And that's kind of half the fun of it. Plus, it's just, you know, it, it's it's like a, uh, it's an ego thing where, you know, well, I got to go on this show to prove that I'm, you know, not a pansy. So uh, it's a great one. But what they always do is water. Which, you know, if, if, you're, if you're eating hot sauce, I mean, as anybody knows, water is not really going to do anything for the heat. It's, it's literally just to help wash down the, um, the, you know, the wings. But it makes you feel like you're trying to cool the fire with water because it's ice cold water. But it, it doesn't actually do anything for the heat. But they do have milk, which even then, that doesn't really do much. Um, as uh, Alton Brown will tell you, um, cream and alcohol are, are the only two... Uh, things that he knows for a fact will um, kill the uh, the heat. So he um, brought some half and half cream when he was doing the uh, hot ones and he weathered it pretty well. But it also looked like he was a huge fan of hot sauce to begin with. So I don't know 
that he necessarily w he probably would have been just as composed if he had been um, had had not had the half and half. I'm not sure, but he said alcohol and uh, cream. But I've been told that the jasmine tea, and at times it did seem to help. It didn't help that we made it, you know, kind of like last minute. So the tea itself was actually really hot, and I didn't think to drop a ice cube in. But um, you know, I'm interested to see that nobody's brought some jasmine tea to Hot Ones yet in an attempt to uh, try and <clears throat> quell the fire. But yeah, so, you know, we keep on messing around with it, trying to get it more and more uh, authentic and uh, yummy to our palate. And again, it's just a, it's just a blast, it's just a lot of fun. Um, you know, we have the rice noodles, which, honestly, those are one of the things where I, I love using chopsticks. I, I, I like that I'm, you know... a Intermediate, I guess like you could say, you know, uh, at best. But um, those glass noodles, man, I don't know how even the most professional chopstick person would be able to uh, manipulate those. Um, they, they're just so slippery that the best that I can usually do from using chopsticks is just try and get it roughly where the medium middle of it is. Try and get onto the plate before it slips over because whatever side is a little bit longer is going to be the heavier side and it's going to fall off the chopstick no matter how tight you squeeze. And then just kind of lift up, you know, a portion of it once it's cool and then just kind of slip the whole thing up. So, um, for those at least, you know, I feel it's okay to break down and either, you know, grab a fork or, um, and, and you know, you are, you know, allowed to use like, you know, a scoop or tongs and in order to, you know, get the stuff out onto the plate anyway. But I mean, most of the food that you toss in there is, uh, you know, chopstick friendly, you know, so like the mushrooms and stuff, I mean, easiest thing in the world to grab the, uh, the meat pretty easy too so um you know it's just uh it's a, it's fun it's a blast to eat and it's certainly tasty and you know you're th you're throwing in so many healthy ingredients like you know um you know, you know mushrooms uh you know rice uh, noodles made from rice instead of uh, wheat you got um you know relatively healthy pieces of meat like i said some of them are a little bit fatty but you know fat's not necessarily bad for you uh it's you know unprocessed just really thinly um you know shaved and usually the meat is something you do later on anyway and that's something that because you know the uh some of like the shoots and the sprouts and stuff take longer to to cook so you usually throw those in first and end up eating those uh, quite a bit so you know it's re relatively healthy it's a lot of uh you know a lot of veggies and um stuff so you can feel relatively guilt for eating it uh if anything i think that the most that we would react to from having it would probably be um, if our body didn't care for some of the peppers or any number of the ingredients. But for the most part, we seem to do all right on it. So, excuse me, I got a sneeze. I hear I thought I'd be coughing up a storm, and instead I've been fighting off this sneeze for the past five minutes. It feels like it's like, and I don't have any. <clears throat> what, are you, what are you supposed to do? Look at the sun, raise your arms, or no? That's for choking. Um, but yeah, I, it's just like either. Sneeze or, or go away, you stupid nose. Anyway, so, again, my, my pain, my anguish. Uh, so, that's about it for uh, updates. I'm, you know, still trying to figure this out. i got to start banking some episodes so that I don't have an excuse of, oh, well, I was busy all week and I don't have a, you know... Because, I mean, it isn't like the videos are that long. I mean, usually it's just like 10 minutes tops about uh, dog stuff. But, yeah, that's how come I kind of missed one last week. I... We'll see if I can try and get a uh, replacement video up, but not today. Today I have a uh, uh, mountain of dishes. Anytime you make a really good meal, you're going to have a mountain of dishes that you look at and then you're just like, well, I mean, now we get to digest, you know, and then you just don't end up going back to them. So then the next day you look at it and you're just like, all right, I got to take care of it before, you know, um, before I make some more for this dinner, because, you know, there's nothing worse than the dishes piling up to the point where you have to move the faucet over in order to fill up a cup. I mean, that, that's when it's just like, okay, no, I, I can't watch TV, or I can't have the TV on in the background, but it's like, no, I gotta, I gotta do this before it's embarrassing. Like, if somebody came into the house right now, and, I, you know, they wanted to give themselves a glass of water, and they'd have to go use the bathroom sink, no, that's not okay. That's not uh, how, you know, you should have uh, your kitchen sink. It, it would help if we had a double. That way, when one gets, one gets full, you can just, like, you know be filling the big pots in the other one, scrub them clean, rinse them, and then put them in the pot holder. So I believe the next time that if we do a renovation or, you know, whatever, I would love to get a two sinker. I feel like those are uh, a game changer, so much more useful because 
I don't know. I, from what I understand, dishwashers have gotten a lot better so that they don't leave all the stuff still on the plate and they actually take up less water than you washing the dishes. So, you know, maybe, maybe that'll be the next reno, but I still would like to have a double sinker. I think that those are awesome. And, um, yeah, this is, uh, this is adulthood. This is, this is you getting, um, you know, uh, gonna be a little crass, but, you know, this is me getting a dad boner over the thought of, uh, you know, different kitchen appliances and, uh, stuff that I could be having. So, yeah, that's what happens with age. You, you know, you start to appreciate a, a, uh, good car with good gas mileage as opposed to power. Like, I, se I severely sacrifice power when it comes to the mileage on this thing because, um, it's a standard, like I said, which is great. A manual is so much fun to drive and, you know, so many less things to go wrong with it. But at the same time, I've had to downshift into a pretty low gear just to be able to go up a hill at a decent amount of speed. So the thing is it, not going to be towing a trailer or anything anytime soon, but that's not the point. The point is, is I still haven't filled the tank since I got it. And that's what's important to me nowadays. You know, um, it, it's, it's funny because the, the previous vehicle that I was driving had such similar um, stats and yet it was a gas guzzler, probably because it's like on its last leg, you know, and that's why. But yeah, this thing is just purrs like a kitten. I, I haven't had to fill the tank yet. And it was at three quarters when I got it. So that's just insane that I still have burned that little gas. So I love it. It's great for me. Uh, the only thing that I would like to be able to do, I think I can MacGyver something for because it doesn't have quite the room that I wanted it to, but I have an idea in my head where I think three pieces of wood and I should be able to, um, you know, make it so that I, I can extend the, uh, the back a little bit. But anyway, we'll see if I ever get around to doing that. I, I, I always love having, uh, just, just like my girl when it comes to, you know, interior, like, I mean, the house, like, you know, she's always like, you know, we could, uh, you know raise the roof and, you know, build up instead of out. And, you know, she just has, you know, knock this wall out and make this in a different room. Like she always has plans like that. And, um, you know, there's always a hundred different things to do before that. You know, it's like, we got to get a better, uh, heating and cooling system in here. So, you know, doing those big high end renovations are going to be like way further down the list, but it's nice to have ideas of like what you could do. Cause it, it's never going to end. I mean, if it did, that'd be kind of boring. It's like, there's always going to be something, new to do, new to improve on. And then if you get it perfect to where you want to, then you start a garden, you do something, you keep, keep busy. Um, you, you know, you stop moving and then you're dead quite literally, but also figuratively. So, you know, keep on keeping on to all you out there. Um, you know, keep making better. I appreciate you. And hopefully, uh, some of these quirks and kinks will be worked out, but now I can't use the excuse that I need to get a car because I have one. So yay, yay me and yay, uh, cutting down on smoking. Like I said, that's at least I'd say that's at least six less six less cigarettes a day because of uh, not uh, smoking in the car anymore because, you know, you do enough commuting. It's just like, oh, yeah, you know, you light another one that goes out and then you're driving, you're bored, and then you light another one. So I'm not doing that anymore. Um, you know, sometimes I have like just, you know, punch out of work, had a cigarette and then got into the car to go drive home. But, you know, that's still so different than, you know, smoking. Uh, a handful on the, you know, the drive. And yeah, I got to say, it's nice having a car that smells like a car instead of an ashtray. Um, even smokers don't particularly care for the smell of a, of a stale put out cigarette. That just doesn't, that smell doesn't appeal to anybody, I don't think. Um, I mean, it's not as bad as a cigar, but it, cigars, I don't know, maybe as, as I've gotten older, you know, uh, I used to think those were the nastiest smell. And I was, I've been a smoker since I was 14 and I still couldn't stand the, the stink of cigars. And now that I've gotten older and probably half of my, you know, probably half of the uh, receptors in my nose have died, um, they're not too, too bad. They're not as bad, especially if you're like outdoors and if it gets bad enough, you can avoid it. But they don't have that nastiness to them that I uh, pre previously did because I, I actually smoked one uh, with, with my buddy um, <clears throat> a week or so back. And so that was, you know, surprisingly pleasant. I still could. I still don't get the people that can smoke an entire, you know, regular size cigar, like all the way down. Um, after a certain point, like, doesn't your mouth just start to like hurt and just taste awful? And and what's hilarious is that afterwards, don't you just still want a cigarette anyway? So I, I don't quite get the whole cigar thing, especially when it comes to smoking that much. But I mean, a half of one, 
you know, on, on special occasions, you know, uh, there's something really kind of soothing, you know, not just from the nicotine, but I think just the complementativeness of, uh, that's got to be a word, right? Complementativeness um, of, you know, just kind of, you know, kind of just sitting there chilling, you know, letting, letting the, the ash get, you know, to a decent size before, you know, knocking it off. You talked for too long, and now you got to relight it. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's pleasant, but I, I definitely don't ever see me being the type of person that gets a humidor and a cigar club membership thing, you know, like that's, so who knows, maybe if I quit uh, cigarettes entirely, I'll have the occasional uh, stick and uh, I, won't, I won't have to worry about that becoming a, a nightly thing. But either way, first step, first things first, cutting down on the smoke, which, excuse me, here, I thought it was going to be coughing, now it's burping and all other noises. All the other dad noises instead of coughing. Anyway. But yeah, so. I, I'm making good on, uh, on making better. So I hope that you are too. I hope that um, this, this recent storm wasn't too bad for you. And um, I will hopefully see you later this week with an actual video instead of just an update. Alright. Alright, I'm out. <laughs>